Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corin Brad, and today we're going to do some popsicle stick paintings. Can't say that very quickly either. You've probably seen them on Pinterest. They're great little paintings on wooden canvases that are just made from lollipop sticks. And you can let your creativity go wild. You can match the backgrounds to match your room decor, and they're very simple to make. Even if you can't paint for toffee, you can turn out a decent looking painting and I'm going to show you how. So let's just pop them to one side. First of all what you need is some lolly sticks. You can either make a small canvas with the normal size lolly sticks that you can buy in packs from most children's craft stores. I've got here a set of bigger craft sticks that will make a palette, a larger palette for you. But this is how I make them. Get yourself a piece of stiffish card. If you lay it on a gridded cutting mat, it always helps. Get yourself some decent sticky glue. Um, actually, I'm going to turn this this way. This is a textile glue which I've used on numerous occasions before, but it actually works on leather, card, wood, all sorts of things. And just scribble yourself a couple of lines of glue and then place a lolly stick on the edge of your card. Add a second one. And use the grid marks to make sure that the height of your lolly, the, the ends of your lolly sticks are even. The other thing you can do as well, actually, is if you put yourself a ruler on, along there, it gives you a guideline. Carry on gluing them. And this glue is like a, a spirit-based spirit glue, so you've got an immediate tackiness to it. it. Holds them in position really well without them slip sliding around. I'm going to make a small palette here. Just fill up that last line of glue. There you go. And then once you've made your palette as large as you like, if you let that glue dry, which I'm not going to, then you can just trim your card to size and pray that the uh, lolly sticks don't shift as you're doing so. And then just to strengthen the back, just put another couple at a right angle to the first. So you can make these paintings to use as paintings or to use as coasters. You've seen those palette coasters that are so popular. This is a much easier way of making a palette type coaster. It doesn't to, tend to collapse quite as much. So I'm going to let that dry, but I'm going to show you a painting technique on one of these larger ones that I've done, just so you can see more clearly. <coughs> I'm going to do a sunset. So I've got some acrylic paints, and I've got a handy little bowl here. And this is just a synthetic wide brush. It's quite soft, very easy to use. Give your paint a shake because they will settle, the paint, acrylic paint will settle in the bottle. Only need a little bit. And I wouldn't suggest that you water it down. Right. I'm just going to paint along this top edge here in this purple. We'll do the edges as well. And if you brush towards the middle, because you'll get a much nicer feathery look. If you see, if I've started there, you've got the end of that brush like that. It's quite a hard line. So if you brush towards the middle, it gets rid of that hard line. I'm going to add a bit of Midnight Blue. Only a little bit, because I don't want this too dark. But equally, I just want to give the effect of it being a night sky. And work quickly so that your paint colours blend. There we go. A little bit of a slightly lighter blue. So you're getting that midnight sky effect. 
but it's not black, it's not hard. And just keep adding those other colours. If you find that you've gone too much, you know, it's, it's too dark in an area, with acrylic, with a wide brush, what you can do is just continue painting over it to blend the colours in. Because I'm going to put a really brightish blue here now. And you'll go, oh my god, what the hell has she done? If I put that in the middle... These wet colours will still blend into it. And there's a really pale blue here. I'm running out of space in my uh, handy dish. I should need a little bit more than that. Trying very hard not to get paint on my hands or my clothes. Um, just be warned with acrylic paint, if you've ever used it, you'll be well aware of the fact that once it gets into your clothes, it never comes out again. Let's have a look at that. Yeah. I am just going to wash this brush off because I do want to make sure that I've got some really good highlights down this bottom here. So it's a much paler sky. Oh. And again, try to brush into the middle so you don't get those hard lines. And then just to really scare you, I'm going to put some yellow, just to indicate a sunset. You don't need a lot of yellow. I'm also going to put a tiny bit of orange down there as well. all the time keeping it wet. It's quite handy that I've just washed this brush actually because it's kept that yellow quite wet. So that I can then take, I don't need to dry that off, I can then take that light blue again and just blend it in without it turning green. green there because I didn't allow it. I should have uh, dried the brush off a little bit. Oh. Okay. The thing is also you can work over this. Unlike watercolour paint, once your acrylic paint has dried, you will find that the colour will just stay there. With watercolour paint, you end up re-merging the colours. And I'm just going to put a little bit of pink. So you end up virtually using every colour in your colour palette. get that like sunset effect. I don't want too much yellow because this is supposed to be a night sky but you just want a hint of the yellow so that the sun has set, the stars are coming out. And while we're on the subject of stars, if you're any good at painting circles then you can paint yourself a nice moon. Look at the colour of my hands. If you're no good at painting circles what I would suggest you do is you just perhaps sketch a circle or another tip which actually I'll show you in a minute better tip for doing your moon get your white paint and for your stars if you take a thin paintbrush and use the tail end of the paintbrush just dip it in there oh, hang on let me just wipe that paint up a bit before I get it on my sleeve and then just dot 
little constellations. You can actually mark out, if you know your constellations, you can actually mark them out properly. But just bear in mind, stars aren't evenly spaced in the sky. They do seem to come in clusters. Some are bigger and brighter than others. So you've got a starry background there. And um, as far as your moon goes, if you're no good at painting circles, cut yourself a disc of white card with a small circle die. Try and make sure you haven't got any paint on your fingers while you're doing this. And then just glue it to your sky. So then you've got your background and you can do whatever you like on it. You could have, you could release your inner Bob Ross and you could have like a mountainous scene with the light reflecting of, on the water. If you've got a lighter background, you could have um, like a bird silhouette on a sunset sky. So I mean, that looks quite nice. Or if you're no good at drawing whatsoever, what you can do is you can grab yourself some dies and you can cheat by doing die cut images on your background, which if you blend them in well, people from a distance won't know that you haven't painted them at all. It's a very easy method of doing that. This is a Spellbinders die. Um, it's called Unicorn Dream, I think. And you've got a unicorn and some clouds and there's a rainbow that goes with it as well. If you get some ink pads, these are Versamark ink pads, they're um, like a pigment ink. And this is one of the paintbrushes that I have killed because I used it with PVA glue, never washed it out properly. So it is actually stiff as a board. But it's very good for just lightly stenciling. In fact, actually I'll do it on here. lightly stenciling the underside of your image so it looks like your unicorn is being lit up by the sunset just under his chin there a bit on his belly and who doesn't love a unicorn again a bit of glue If you use a good quality PVA actually, that would then make sure that you stick all of your unicorn's limbs down properly. You know when you get scared because the paint's still wet? <laughs> and again, with the clouds, oh, let's just grab a couple of these that I've pre-die cut already. Oh. Stipple just the underside of the clouds with a bit of pink. Oh, it's a bit too strong that, hold on. And a bit of yellow. That's better, that's blended it in with a good old scrub and then just pop your clouds on your painting so there you go, you've got your midnight roaming unicorn so pictures like this and this and they're really quick as I say, you can use them, I mean that's quite large to use as a coaster, but you know, if you've got a big mug of tea then you could do. You know, smaller backgrounds work perfectly well, and again, same sort of thing, you just paint on your stars, you could paint on your mountains, you could cover your hands in paint, you could cover the tabletop in paint. But as long as you're enjoying what you're doing, it really doesn't matter how much mess that you make. So I hope you enjoyed that, we'd love to see your creations, so do share them with us, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye! If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.